Thank you. Do you think it's possible to get a little bit more focus on that, please? A walk up to 6,000 meters on Ilampu, Bolivia, 1972. Only this thin pane of glass separates us from the world outside. The way to the mountains starts here. Reaching the summit is only half the journey. Right shoulder, way of the sun, midnight sun. Rocks falling onto a frozen lake. One stone thrown into a pond, full moon the light of day and the darkness of night, storm prediction, changing shape of the brain. Outdoors, indoors, the outdoor life, homelessness, a blank space on the map, slow time, fast time, blossom time, momentum, footprints of the ancestors, the guidebook to a location of the mind, sun road, melting snow, grinding corn, destination forwards, backwards memory, placing one foot in front of the other, rhythm, instincts, not ideas, the magnetic way, ideas, not instincts. Evaporation, lenticular cloud, banner cloud, heads or tails, lost in thought, breathing through clothes, heartbeat, sounds of flying swans, the healing powers of walking, too much walking scars the earth, deer tracks on dew-covered grass, balanced four, unbalanced seven, woken by birdsong, the chemistry of physical exhaustion, walking into the wind, death and rebirth, walking with the wind, adjusting, adjusting, Subtraction, active minerals, path of the meditator. The energy generated by laughter. Wishful thinking, dead dogs, a spare pair of gloves, walking to and fro in falling rain. Gravity, I just follow the rules, I don't make them up. Flooding, destruction and creation, to build is to destroy. Singing, making art should be as simple as sweeping the floor. In the mind, in the sleeping bag, inside the tent, in a storm. Buzzing fly, chattering sparrows, barking dogs, howling wolves, any time, anywhere, you can't tell what's round the next corner. Many levels, salt lines on boots, where to begin, when to stop. Altitude of the tree line, high tide, low tide, a glass of water, a circle of lichen, a circle of mushrooms. Yesterday's frozen sweat, resting place on the ground, in the clouds and through time, traveling the connections, living the changes, edge of the mountain, edge of the ocean, the migration of geese, the migration of butterflies, a line of ants, magic map, stone, shape of an egg in the river, a worm crosses the road. Counting with fingers, walking with toes, beads, paces, walking backwards in mud, upstream, downstream, where dusk meets dawn, twigs of the arctic willow, the flame, a scattering of raindrops on flat, dry rock, the shadow of unseen heat waves, cool air from the waterfall, the scent of flowers carried on a breeze, particles of dust floating in a shaft of sunlight, 
spider tracks across cold campfire ash, a mouse calling in the wind. Into a walk, into nature. The physical involvement of walking creates a receptiveness to the landscape. I walk on the land to be woven into nature, vertical trees and horizontal hills. The character of a walk cannot be predicted. A walk is practical, not theoretical. A cross-country walk, including camping, allows a continuity of time influenced by the weather. A road walk can transform the everyday world and give a heightened sense of human history, but in the end, all paths point to what we call the wilderness or homeland. I drive a car but do not use it to go to or from a walk. I sell art to pay for the next walk. I do not live in the highlands of Scotland, but in the heavily trafficked rural suburbia of southeast England. I am not a studio artist. There is no one system by which I choose to make all my walks. <clears throat> I have no plans for walking indoors, but I imagine it could be possible. Absent, the landscape is not in the gallery. A physically demanding walk is more rewarding than a walk not about exertion, and both are of equal importance. All my walks are related from the first to the last. When I am not walking, I eat and drink too much. When I walk and camp, I carry all my food, therefore I eat less, which is the preferred state, weaker but lighter, and the rucksack heavier. On a road walk, the availability of drink and food keeps the energy levels high. Petrol, food as fuel, not a stimulant. Responsibilities of a solo walker. Occasionally, I make route-finding mistakes. I've lost two tents on separate occasions, both in gusting winds. Both were mistakes, not accidents. I once made the error of falling into a small crevasse. In retrospect, not an experience to have missed. Walking the dog. I've only taken part in one expedition. Most of my walks are made alone. When walking alone, nothing is deflected, but the power of group walking can carry the individual. A walk has a life of its own and does not need to be made into a work of art. On my walks, I've met many inspiring human beings and on one walk, I encountered a family of three grizzly bears. My art has been influenced by a variety of friends and by the walking peoples of the world from all periods of history Native American culture, Himalayan art, Western mountaineers, and Japanese haiku poets. My art acknowledges the element of time, the time of my life, one distance in the mountains and another distance down the road, length in miles or length in days, tying the knots. The artwork cannot represent the experience of a walk. a two-way relationship in the physical sense. The flow of influences should be from nature to me, not from me to nature. Tara Humara. Some technology has greatly enhanced human life, but often it forms a barrier between us and nature. Divisions, the human animal, fragmentation, some human abilities based on a close relationship with nature have been lost, broken lineage. Most of my text works are in the English language. I respect the existence of all languages, both sides of the river. As an armchair mountaineer, my art has been influenced by the British and Indian Himalayan climbers Doug Scott and Sharu Prabhu, not by the Romantics Turner and Wordsworth, I grew up in the shipbuilding city of Newcastle-upon-Tyne. Through art making, I feel a continuity with my childhood. In cold weather, packing the rucksack for a hot weather walk. In warm weather, packing the rucksack for a cold weather walk. I am not a world traveller and have only visited a few countries. In itself, transport, sitting, is not part of my art. Rules of the way. I would prefer to walk for one week rather than ride around in a vehicle touring anywhere for six months. 
For me, staying in one place and traveling are of equal importance. Local, global, local. Far away and long ago. No meaning in distant places. Conversations of the here and now. In the valley, dreaming of the hill. On the hill, wishing for the valley. Lying, sitting, standing, walking. Walking, standing, sitting, lying. Accumulation and transition. Movement is an important dimension in my art. Movement exists in relation to its apparent opposite, stillness. The designed city exists in relation to its opposite, what we call the natural landscape. Interrelated borderline, yin and yang, mountain high, river deep, the unity of opposites, nothing stays the same, everything is changing, one thing leads to another, here we go again. All my walk texts are true. If they were not, the only person I could cheat would be myself. I've chosen to record my walks out of respect for their existence. The texts are facts for the walker and fiction for everyone else. Walking into the distance, beyond imagination. Locked in a drawer, plans stored on a computer disk. A wall painting could be painted 100 years later, fresh paint. Weight, color, form. Framed artworks are objects, not sculptures. Content and form. Walking is the constant, the art medium is the variable. Content, not image. Numbers are both of significance and no significance. The total number of leaves on one tree exists, whether counted or not. Counted, not estimated. I'm curious about the number seven. Erosion. Mountain skylines are the meeting place of heaven and earth. The outline of a small roadside stone can be drawn around immediately. An unrecognizable shape of an indescribable color is something not easily categorized. Slime and fungus. Papunya. Where do you come from? Trekking through jungles and across ice caps are genuine adventures, and they also imply money, jet travel, lots of travel, seats and windows. The world's highest mountains are not located in Western Europe. It is good to walk from my doorstep, starting at sunset and ending at sunrise, walking without a map in an unspectacular landscape. In 1973, after completing a 1,022-mile walk, I made the commitment to only make art resulting from the experience of individual walks. Over the years, I have consistently made walks, though so far I would describe them as short. This is a question of acknowledging scale and standards from outdoor sports, outside of contemporary art. Observations are not objects. Walking is active. My orientation to words and drawings results from the ease of carrying pen and paper, not chisel, hammer, and stone. Imposed order on paper, not the land. My artworks equal control. My walks equal freedom. Talking and no talking are of equal importance. Dialogue. Too much talking with mind and voice can deflect nature so that I no longer see the drifting clouds or hear the birds sing. Irony results from being wet and cold and saying it's going to happen all over again very soon. Humor is an important part of life. Only art resulting from the experience of individual walks. Only means not a generalized response to nature. Art resulting from means first the walk, second the artwork. The experience of means a walk must be experienced, it cannot be imagined. Individual walks means each walk has a beginning and an end. No two stones on the beach have the same shape, do they? You can't be in two places at the same time, can you? Easier said than done. The obvious does not need to be stated. The obvious needs to be stated. In this country, how do you open doors? Push or pull? Fly weight. The weight of a fly. Change perceptions, not the landscape. The landscape 
as location, not raw materials. Walks are both predictable afterwards and unpredictable beforehand. You can't be quite sure. Some things are not certain. A pulled muscle, a twisted ankle, the wrong footwear resulting in a backache, a virus, soft deep snow, or the magic of perfect timing. Time equals life, life equals art, art equals walk, walk equals time. New water passing by. Glacial boulders equals stopping places. Monsoon river equals movement. Art equals stopping places. Walking equals movement. The need for sleep. The life of art between exhibitions. The unseen industries of art transportation and storage. Non-transportable art and repeatable art. Sutra copying. New water passing by. Glacial boulders equals great age. Monsoon River equals great distance. Symmetrical insect. There is nothing to explain. The continuity of coincidence. Take it or leave it. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. If in doubt, keep talking, I mean walking. Breaking old ground, making molehills out of mountains, breaking new ground, tip of the iceberg. Warming and melting, city art is about do's, nature art is about don'ts. Boulder time and human lifespan. That which is said and that which is left unsaid. Very busy, a real waste of time. Carrara marble saxophone, discarded chopsticks. Of what can we speak, we speak of what we have seen. With my own eyes, I have seen the giant heads of four presidents carved in stone at Mount Rushmore in the Black Hills of South Dakota and a Tibetan sand mandala in London within walking distance of the River Thames. Arena of energies. Walks are like clouds, they come and go, changing and seen to be changing, changing and seen not to be changing, breathing in, breathing out. No thoughts, counting 15 paces, walking around a can of stones splashed with white paint, Swayambinath Kathmandu, on the Nepalese New Year's Day in the Nepalese year of 2046. Simply being is more difficult than doing. The rocks are alive in their homeland. The rocks means ancestors. Are alive means living. In their homeland means neighborhood. <clears throat> Warm, bright, flowing, cold, dark, frozen. The sounds of moving boulders the sounds of moving boulders on a riverbed, the sounds of moving boulders on a riverbed at night. The mountain was not designed. A line of continuous ridges and summits is a specific view, a profile from a particular location. If viewed from higher or lower, left or right, it would not look the same. Triangle pointing up, a triangle pointing down, Skull joins, mountain shadows cross the river. Drinking water from the mountains. Look out onto the land and see nature's evolution of shape and form. Avalanched rocks on the valley floor, riverbank stones moved by water. Moving and seen to be moving, moving and seen not to be moving. Small birds. Somewhere else, the sound of water beginning to boil. At that place where the world of coffee 
greets the world of tea. Slung over her shoulder in an intricately embroidered cloth bag was one book simply containing a handwritten list of all the particular mountains she had ever climbed. Intervals between waves, the water cycle. Sea, clouds, mountains, rivers, sea, clouds that look like mountains, mountains that look like clouds. Triangle, the slanting rays of the sun. Weaving, weaving, the geometric snake, the geometric mountain, geometric lightning. A giant boulder at its resting place, an ancient tree at its birthplace. Walking step by step, simultaneously, here and there, hot and cold, what you can't see does exist. Break up the walking stick to build a fire, straight smoke. Campfire friendship stirs the memory. Energy from dreams, energy from seeing the view, energy from ideas, energy from energy. Lightning, horizon, snake, cloud, steam, breath. Twilight horizons, what you can see does not exist. On a ridge to mark the way, one rock placed upon another becomes a bird of prey. The road in front is the road ahead, walking back down the road is the road ahead. Road walking leaves no footprints. It is a fact, not an opinion, that this river is fast, deep and cold. Art about walking, an image of a path. A centralized boulder framed by what? A square, a triangle, a perfect circle, or the full expanse of the universe? A 19-day coast-to-coast road walking journey, Toyama Bay, Ontaki Summit, Fuji Summit, Saruga Bay, Honshu, Japan, summer 1988. The good news and the bad news. Hot tea can only cool down, but cold tea cannot heat up by itself. The changing shapes of food, stomachs, rocks, borderlines, the moon, stalagmites and stalactites, heat rises and rain falls. A B O V E B E L O W Raven Stone, not Stone Raven. Change for the sake of change, mind over matter, distance no objects, actions not words. Walking slowly on the Condor's outline, Nazca Desert, Peru. 1972. To build is to destroy. Inhale, exhale, the rabbit was stunned, eaten alive by a weasel. 
Between wild plants, breaking through spider webs, keeping to the trail, walking on ants. Question, hear me but can't see me, see me but can't hear me, what am I? Answer, words. The writing is on the wall. English idioms, blaze a trail, paint yourself into a corner. The boot is on the other foot, seeing is believing. Keep to the straight and narrow, round the bend. Not a leg to stand on, barking up the wrong tree. Walk on air, under the weather. Fit as a flea, an unknown quantity. Talking a mile a minute, practice makes perfect. Against all odds, on cloud nine. When the dust settles, there's a time and a place for everything. Looking like nothing on earth, don't let the grass grow under your feet. Feet of clay, grit your teeth. Keep a low profile, looming large on the horizon. Vanish into the blue, a red herring. What's the big idea? Stop at nothing. Same old story, here today, gone tomorrow. Kill time, off the record, off the beaten track. Keep the record straight. Obey the call of nature, grasp the nettle. Think nothing of it. March with the times, last legs, last word. The terms yin and yang originally referred respectively to the shaded and sunlit faces of a mountain peak. Accepting the flatness of earth, but rejecting the flatness of view. Snow, twig, howl, rain, eyes, frog, dawn, lake, hawk, mind, moss, wind, deer, cold, leaf, crow, mist, bear, rock, seed, dust, star, fish, walk, bone, moon, camp, fire. A 17 day walk in the Rocky Mountains of Alberta, Canada, autumn 1984. The salmon leaps upstream. How many letters are there in the word contradiction? Answer, unlucky 13. How many letters are there in the word 13? Answer, eight. How many letters are there in the word eight? Answer, five. How many letters are there in the word five? Answer, four. How many letters are there in the word four? Answer, four. Four letter words. Land, walk, mark, time. The English language and the passenger jet. Fly sitting to make a walk. Question, what is the difference between here and there? Answer, the letter T. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. Written words in the artwork can describe verbal silence on a walk. Flat page, flat word, flat wall, flat painting, flat floor, flat sculpture, flat photograph, flat screen, flat window, flat door, flat road. Many roads forming one route, drawing a line of joined up daily distances growing across the map from the start to the end of the walk. The walked line, unlike the drawn line, cannot be erased. The straight road, the winding road, human art, the footpath, old road today. Just take it one day at a time, walking at your own pace. Tally marks. Like a flowing river, the days cannot be repeated. Question, why do you repeat walks? Answer, because I prefer to talk about what I have done rather than what I will do. Change for the sake of change. Walking is the constant, the art medium is the variable. An object cannot compete with an experience. A walk to the summit of Pico de Orizaba, Mexico, November 1979. One night bivouac on the summit rim. 
Distance and Time. A walk to the summit of Popocatapetl, Mexico, January 1990. One night bivouac on the summit rim. Distant drums. Geronimo, yes. Picasso, no. Teeth, north and south, reading from left to right. Summer solstice. A road walking journey from the Mediterranean Sea to the English Channel, Narbonne Plage to Boulogne sur Mer, France, the 1st to the 21st of June. To save weight. Lost toenail clippers, snapped bootlaces, and broken tent zips. Null and void, persona non grata, a penny for your thoughts. Consistency, duration, accumulation, the flow of blood, labyrinth, meander, circumambulation, the sun rose as a circle and set as an oval, the midway walk mind. Red, yellow, blue, crescent, waxing, full, waning, pole star, shooting star. Sleeping on the same mat in the same place every night equals circles. Sleeping on a different mat in a different place each night equals a line. Build an experience. Ritual calendar, language of the streets. Make up your own grammar. The F word and the S word, feet and socks. The empty notebook, come as you are. Tea stained teeth, LNT, leave no trace. It's like this, there's what you've experienced yourself and then there's what you've read about. More emphasis on the recording than the event being recorded. A handful of stones and a pack of cards. The image does not illustrate the text and the text does not explain the image. This is not fiction. Counting 100,000 paces, walking on country roads and paths, Kent, England, the 27th of March, 1994. Coast to coast, river to river, river to sea. 21 walks from 1971 to 1997. Winter solstice, full moon. A continuous 125 mile walk without sleep. The pilgrim's way from Winchester to Canterbury. Roads, paths and ancient trackways. England, 21, 22 and 23 December 1991. Question. Is the walk really the art? Answer, the walk can be thought of as an art form, but unlike an art object, a walk cannot be sold. The spiritual consequences of walking. Kai Hogyo, 28 one day walks from and to Kyoto, traveling by way of Mount Hiei, walking around the hill, on a circuit of ancient paths. Japan, 10th of October 1991 to the 19th of May 1998. There's some good statistics in there, you just want to have a look at those. A 21 day coast to coast walking journey on roads and paths starting on the first day of May from the mouth of the Kamino River in Wakayama, ending at the mouth of the Mia River in Isa, traveling by way of Shionomasaki, Kumano Hongo, Shakagataki, Omene, Miwa-san, Mount Hiei, Miyuniyama, Key Peninsula, Japan, 1996. Antlers and branches, 
red deer and Caledonian pine. Seven seven-day walks made in the Cairngorm Mountains of Scotland from March 1985 to April 1991. A 31-day road walking journey from the River Rhone at Valence to the River Danube at Vienna, starting on the day of the September full moon, ending on the night of the October full moon, 1994, France, Switzerland, Italy, Austria, Germany, Austria. An 18-day road walking journey from the River Rhone at Valence to the Atlantic Ocean on the border of Spain and France, spring 1995. 31 days and 18 days equals 49 days. 49 equals 7 times 7. The first seven steps and the last seven steps. Number seven equals index finger of the right hand. The seven rings, the seventh veil, the seven summits, the seven concentric mountains, the seven vices, the seventh wave, the seven seas, the four quarters. Three plus four equals seven. Three times four equals twelve. The seventh day of the twelfth month. The moon lives for twenty-eight days. I said seven, I thought four. Odd and even, roll the dice. Two legs and a walking stick, four for a dog. One times two times three times four times five times six times seven equals 5,040. 5,040 equals seven times eight times nine times 10. Seven colors of the rainbow transformed into a cloud of gray dust. Monday equals moon, Tuesday equals fire, Wednesday equals water, Thursday equals wood, Friday equals rock, Saturday equals earth, Sunday equals sun. Two ears, two eyes, two nostrils, one mouth, the seven wandering stars. Rain Road, walking 40 miles each day on country roads, Monday to Sunday by the same route for the first seven days of the 12th month, Kent, England, 1997. Blue sky, black crow, white tree, red rock, cold water, dead fish. Blue water, cold sky, black fish, dead crow, red tree, white rock. Red sky, blue crow, dead tree, cold rock, black water, white fish. Cold water, white crow, dead sky, black tree, red fish, blue rock. An 11 day wandering walk, Central Australia, July moon eclipse, 1982. The bright lights. All contemporary art is urban art. City art is city life. From the windows of the house to the windows of the bus, the windows of the train, the windows of the airport, the windows of the aircraft, the windows of the airport, the windows of the train, the windows of the taxi, the windows of the hotel, the windows of the restaurant, the windows of the gallery, the computer screen and the arts protected by glass. The photograph of the mountain is not sacred, the mountain is. Crashing waves, bare feet, red petals, a necklace of shells, slowness, lost to the stars. Deliberate underproduction. Grass was hair, soil was skin, rocks were soul, rivers were bloodstream, mountains were backbone, wind was lungs. Absorker, meaning a bird with a pointed tail. A 21-day wandering walk, 20 nights camping, 
no talking for 14 days in the Bare Tooth Mountains of Montana, ending with the full moon of September 1997 for the seventh generation. Seven directions of the Oglala Sioux, west, north, east, south, zenith, nadir, and the messenger. Manipulation, <clears throat> self-publicist, media hype, and the information highway. I have read that there is no known photograph of the Lakota crazy horse. His place of burial is a secret. At the start of our 21st century, if we say we respect nature, out of what materials can we make art? From rocks moved by water up to stones thrown by the wind and back down to rocks moved by water. Walking for 14 days, camping for 14 nights in the high mountains of Argentina, early 1998. Fourteen seven-day walks in the Cairngorm region of Scotland from 1985 to 1999. Right shoulder, way of the sun, index finger of the right hand. Tibetan Kora flowing round. Seven circuits about a stupor on the seventh day. Seven circuits about a stupor on the fourteenth day. 14 one-day walks from and to Kathmandu on roads and paths by way of Nagarjuna Hilltop, Shivapuri Hilltop, Fulchoki Hilltop, Farping Hilltop, Nepal, the 24th of March to the 6th of April, 1998. Energy from sunlight. Seven one-day walks on roads and paths out and back, 44 miles each day, Monday to Sunday, ending on the solstice, Kent, England, June 1998. One group of 14 people walking on roads and paths up and down Sarakurayama 10 times in seven days. The 31st of July to the 6th of August 1994, Yahata, Kyushu, Japan. Pilgrim's Threads. <clears throat> 26 people from 15 countries attempting to walk as one group from lake level up to the top of a nearby hill and back down to lake level once a day for 14 consecutive afternoons on roads, tracks and paths. Changing weather, changing altitude, changing number of walkers, changing perceptions. A full moon on the seventh night. Como, Italy, the 3rd to the 16th of July, 1998. No talking for seven days, a 14-day walking journey, 14 nights camping, along the north shores and over the bluffs of the Milk River, downstream and returning upstream, starting on the seventh day of the seventh month, tent doors facing the sunrise each day, Alberta, Canada, 1999. So who we have here is uh, bush pilot Paul Klaus and mountain guide Richard Veer in Alaska. Gravity, weather, horizon, berries, talking, grizzly, seventh, nothing, towards, erosion, surface, boiling, journey, numbers, rhythms, walking, changes, perhaps, boulder, iceberg, sandbar. A 21-day cross-country walking journey guided and resupplied in the Wrangell St. Elias region of Alaska late summer 1999. Make a walk, write a text, read it to an audience, body and voice. And that's the end. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think we've got some time for a few questions, if anyone's got any. <coughs> I think I might get a six.
seven caves or seven mesas, and eventually you realize that this, if you want to choose this number seven, it could be three or nine or whatever. But I've noticed with the number of seven that you can, you can um, eventually you can come across uh, facts about the number seven which are already existing in the world. In other words, you don't have to invent them. So I just find that interesting. So I think that it's important and not important. You know, it's just like a, if you want to think that way, and then, and then it can develop. It's like you you uh, you try out this number seven or whichever one it is, and then through the years you know, things develop. So like the idea that I was saying then, you know, two eyes, two nostrils, two ears, one mouth, that's seven, you know, seven stars, and so forth. it goes on. Um, so, so I agree uh, with the implication of what you're saying, that what, what could be more natural than human beings? Well, we're, we are natural, we're part of nature. So uh, that, you know, that is just like raises that type of a question, um, uh, you know, that, w that we are natural, but then we do damaging things to the environment. And so um, in this case, this, I'll tell you where this originates from, uh, in Japan, Outside, northeast, outside of uh, Kyoto, there's a hill called Mount Hie, which I refer to in this lecture. <coughs> and there are these people there that uh, the Japanese are thoroughly sick of, but uh, coming from the west, I find it interesting. Uh, and they circumambulate the, the hill, and in the course of going around this hill, then, then they make offerings or say prayers to certain natural objects, like a giant thousand-year-old cedar tree, for instance. And so, what you're starting to talk about was um, this idea of, you know, that it's a one-way relationship, you know, that's all just coming from nature to me, and that I don't want to do anything back to nature. But in this case, I would suggest that there's kind of some sort of a possibility of a reciprocal uh, relationship between, uh, that could develop between natural phenomena, objects and so on, with people. So I was only presenting that as like, let's say, um, just as an idea, I'm not saying at all that that's what I categorically believe or that that's a fact and it's the end of the story, you know. Um, in, in what way? What are you thinking about in particular? Oh yeah. <clears throat> well, um, the the last one that I read out, um, which was from uh, Alaska. Um, again, you know, it's like um, <laughs> compulsive, obs obsessive kind of concern with the number seven. But um, all of those words, you know, like grizzly. <laughs> you know, the fine grizzlies in Alaska, and also it's a seven-letter word. And then you know, so it goes on, and so that's actually in the course of making this walking journey, then I was writing, um, and then eventually I, I sort of saw that there were so many of these words which had um, seven letters in them. So I, uh, I, I composed that piece, which actually ended up in an exhibition in Anchorage in Alaska uh, as a big uh, wall painting. But, um, you know, the, I think you need one sort of point uh, to sort of, as it were, um, almost investigate, I would say. You know, you need, you need some idea which then you, can, you sort of test and then with the use of a, a pen and notebook then you can, I can uh, develop, you know, something. And by the end of the walk then I have uh, the plan for some wall text. Um, well, I um, <clears throat> I really like the, the idea of uh, of meandering, and so, but me you know, it's like they say, you can only go off the path, you know, once you've been on the path. So, you you have to have these kind of um, opposites, um, so that you can make a contrast and a comparison, you know. 
Um, so a liar is only a liar in relation to truth and so on. So um, the, the meandering idea, um, you know, is very um, appealing after you've been making a walk which, where there's no uh, deviation from a planned route at all. So I do like the idea of alternating. So I do one kind of walk and then, then you know, that's, that's that. You've reached a kind of um, completion point with that kind of mentality. And then now you want to kind of loosen up your mind and you want to kind of, you know, meander. So... Uh, you know, I, I do incorporate that, even though, according to this lecture, it doesn't seem as though that's what I do. You know. No, you can't. <clears throat> it's, it's totally impossible. So, um, so I think one of my statements is, you know, that uh, it, it's, it, you know, it's, well, it basically, it's, it is impossible. So, um, I only uh, um, edit, you know, make small, very make small points, you know, which um, are incapable of representing the walk. You know, it's just not possible. So, so it's, you know, because, uh, you know, you, you you could be thinking of anything. You know, you could have you know, some sort of sexual fantasy as you're looking at, you know, like some river or something, you know, you just, there's no telling what the mind is going to be uh, thinking about or doing, whatever. So, so you know, so now all you talk about is, say, on the wall you have photographs of flowers, but that's not really what you were thinking about. So, um, it's impossible. So, I, I just really, you know, concentrate. That's why, that's why it's quite interesting to consider numbers, you know, because then numbers have something kind of fixed and finite about them but not really. Yes, I mean, I, I think Part of my uh, working practice was always that um, that I would give two or three parts to a big story, and then the audience, you know, if they wanted to, if they felt like that, if they could, you know, spare a second to think about it, you know, that then the viewer of the work, that their imagination would then maybe just fill in just like a little bit. Um, so I, I do this on, you know, consciously to uh, sort of, you know, everything is kind of pared down, just this sort of absurd, you know, piece of information. Um, but but then maybe if you just thought about it for a second, you know that if you're if you're sort of walking, you know, with uh, say 25 people or 20 or 18 or whatever it is, um, then of course then you, you you have lots of experiences and lots of interesting conversations with people. Uh, you know, um, I made a walk with a group in Como in Italy, and um, you know, and so you know you have this kind of very strict, you know arranged statement, but but funny things I thought that were funny, you know, you'd be walking along with somebody and you'd hear a conversation and this one girl um, uh, from Latvia or somewhere, I can't remember, and she said um, that because of walking up and down this hill every afternoon, that the, the chemicals in her body had changed and so maybe after, uh, you know, five or six days, in the middle of the night, you know, she couldn't sleep because she had all these chemicals now kind of moving about inside her. So. So she said that she, she lay in bed there and at this place she was staying at and she watched till the TV finished and she couldn't, you know, she said, I still couldn't sleep. And then she said, well, then I turned on some loud uh, rock music and now she's listening to loud rock music. And then eventually the, the, the neighbors below started banging and then knocking on the door and they're shouting up, what are you trying to do? What are you doing? You know, and she said, I'm trying to sleep. You know, so, so when you hear stories like that, you know, and you could hear like, t say, 12 a day, or whatever, then then it's not reflected in here at all. But um, so that, that all that does, it just kind of proves, you know, that there are so many uh, ideas or thoughts or perceptions or emotions that you could have, um, which would become quite difficult to sort of compress, you know, into into a into an artwork. And so part of the way that I work is is you know like it, it relies on other people to activate the statements.
Yeah. Um, well, I think um, quite often, you know, you could have the you could say that uh, art to make art costs some money, you know. So, so one of the things I like about walking is, you know, you can just have a notebook and a pen, and you can just write something. So this is quite immediate. So that's why sometimes um, I, I don't actually uh, show the slides with this lecture. I just kind of think sometimes, well, I'll just make it non-visual. You know, I'll just read, you know, and then um, so that 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 gives me a different idea about that. Um, but I, I think that um, I'm not really interested in mediums in, in art, so I don't want to be thought of as, say, a poet or a painter, um, sculptor or whatever. I actually, um, I kind of really like this idea that, um, that I could make a variety of things, you know, so that it wouldn't be impossible to make a film, it wouldn't be impossible to make music, it wouldn't be impossible maybe to make a performance, it wouldn't be impossible to make a play or something, you know. I think, I think uh, that walking itself, when, when you finish the walk, then it is finished, you know what I mean? So it's, it's terminated. So that then what you do next, how the material, the, the, the form that it's going to take, can sort of be kind of anything you can think of. So I, I'm attracted to that idea rather than, let's say, you know, that you're always taking photographs. Therefore, you know, this is kind of like the way you see the world always as, as photography or always as painting or something. And that, that's only for myself. I mean, I absolutely respect photographers and painters, but um, that's just my in a personal approach. Sorry, what was the, the third, the last part there? Or oh, fiction, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, w well, one of my statements was that the, that the walk texts are facts for the walker and fiction for everybody else. Um, because, you know, if you haven't made the walk, then why should you really believe it? Um, because, you know, if you, have a foot, if you have a slide of a road, then obviously you can drive up in a car, take it, and you know, have a statement underneath, and so you know, maybe, uh, maybe you didn't make the walk down the road at all. If you have a photograph or a slide from the top of a mountain, say, for instance, a mountain that you can't, that's, that's beyond the height of, of helicopter transport, then, you know, th th these are, there are certain places in the world where um, the effort of getting, physical effort of getting there is implied uh, and it does not include mechanical transport. So, you know, like a photograph from the top of Everest or K2 or something, uh, you know, you still can't, well, maybe you could perish. I don't know, but there are, there are certain things which which become a little bit narrowed down a bit, you know. Um, so the question of fiction then is kind of put to the side somewhat. But with all of the kind of fairly straightforward walks that I do, obviously, it's it's open to uh, the question of fiction. So then, so then, full stop. So I actually think that that now, um, with with the kind of media that uh, is coming into most of our lives that this is a, it's an interesting question of fact and fiction. So a lot of people would say, well, oh yeah, everything's fiction. And then, oh yeah, everything's fact. And then when you start, th you know, you kind of, you lose track of what is fact and fiction. But if somebody came in here with a gun and shot a lot of us, then, you know, that would be, it's like a different thing. So I think that watching movies or whatever, something which is fictional, you know, construct a constructed fictional situation, um, that these sort of elements in advertising or uh, artworks and so on, you know, they, they're, they're coming more and more into our lives instead of um, made possibly. I'm only making a suggestion here that, you know, you know, that like in, say, the last 10, 12 years, there's been more sort of, f you know, fictional aspects to our lives in terms of, you know, TV, movies, uh, adverts, commercials and so on. It's just a thought. And so I think there's an interesting debate now between the fact and fiction. You know, is watching TV a primary activity or is it a secondary activity? You know, I think by now it's become a primary activity. So then, you know, there's a question of like watching other people doing things. You're, you're not doing anything, you know. So, but, but you know, everything becomes debatable, doesn't it? It's philosophical, I guess.
<clears throat> I, I think, you know, that um, when I was a student, you know, you, that there would be this question around, um, um, you know, what is this that you're making? And then you sort of see I'm making a sculpture or something. Uh, and then the person would say, well, uh, what are you interested in? And you give this completely different story, you know, and it's got nothing to do with what you're looking at. So you say, well, well, why don't you make something about what you're interested in, you know? Um, I was at an art school in Japan, and um, there, was the, there was one guy there who was, one, he was, he was attempting to talk about his work, you know, which was printmaking or whatever, and um, he, he was really struggling. He had a big problem, sort of almost saying, eh, you know, n more or less nothing. You know, he's really stuck. And so somebody said, so what are you interested in? Well, it turns out he's a, you know, Japanese canoe champion. So immediately, you know, he, he, you know he's like canoeing. So you understand, you know, that, well, I mean, why doesn't he make work about that? But... Um, so I think, you know, you can start out, that's sort of like what I was thinking about, that really, um, you know, that everything at that time in the 60s, which was great and all, <laughs> all of that, but uh, it's kind of like studio work, you know, you're indoors, you know, and uh, and so the, the idea of going to another place, going away, out, somewhere else, you know, was really, um, you know, revolutionary in, pri in the privacy of my mind, you know, I thought it was really incredible, so... Um, when I was a student at St. Martin's, for instance, with two other students, we hitchhiked from London um, non-stop, you know, down to Andorra and then hitchhiked back again. And, um, and you know, that just, just a sort of experience like that, compl you know, completely um, expanded my notion of what, what was possible. And also that you give it your full enthusiasm rather than that what you're involved in is totally laborious, boring, hard work like, you know, you know, you, you just wish you hadn't dug this ditch for yourself. You know, where, you know, you could be doing something that's much more liberating and light and, you know, fulfilling. So, so I, I sort of took that as a, a direction for the work. But then through time, you know, then um, ideas about what, what I could make have developed. And so basically it's just like, you know, you, you sort of start on a course. And, and in fact, I didn't know where it was going to lead to. So it's not like making a certain kind of painting, you know, which is a you repeat a certain type of painting, so you, you kind of have a, an imagination about what, what that experience might be like. But with walking, I think, um, you know, it, it's, um, it, in theory anyway, it's quite a sort of expansive uh, subject. But then you've got the result of what you make, and that, that result could be, like, really boring for people. But the actual experience of doing the walks is sort of expansive. Well, thank you.